So imagine with me, if you will, that you live in Texas and you have kids or grandkids and they are begging to go to Disney. You're thinking, man, first off, we got to get to Florida. We got to get to our hotel. Then we got to deal with the crowds. Then we got to deal with the traffic. We got to deal with the lines and we'll go on a few rides, see a few shows. I would much rather, if I were in that situation, I would much rather figure something out to where I could just experience Disney and let all of my cares float away. So you pick a Disney cruise from Galveston. Not a bad idea. But you do wonder, what itinerary is the best itinerary? Well, we're about to figure that out, so let's go. Welcome to This is the Cruise. I'm Clint, and this is the channel where we look at future cruise itineraries and try to find out if this is the cruise for you. Today, we're looking at some really interesting and fun Disney itineraries leaving from Galveston. In part one, I looked at cruises from Fort Lauderdale. If you missed it, click the pop-up banner up there. You can go watch that. I'm assuming you're here because Galveston is a port you could go to. And that's what we'll do here in part two. In part three, we're going to look at the Sydney, Australia, Auckland area for itineraries. And then in part four, we're going to look at Port Canaveral, AKA the mother port, mothership, the, the basically around Orlando where Disney is the thing, right? That's part four. In part five, I'm going to recap, recap them all and look at which ones kind of were the best from each video. All right. So let's do Galveston really quick. This is like I said, this is part two. And when most people think of Disney, right, they're probably thinking Florida or California, but Galveston is roughly four hours or less drive for like five million people in the country. That's a pretty great location to cruise from. It means that you can get up in the morning, put your stuff in the car. Oh wait, you can get up in the morning, have breakfast, pack up the car, drive to the port, get on the ship and have lunch on cruise ship where you're on vacation. There's no flying, there's no spending the nights. That's pretty great. And obviously that doesn't include if you were to fly to Galveston or Houston to catch one of these cruises either. So not too shabby. And so while you may not be cruising from Galveston either, a lot of cruises go to these same ports and have very similar itineraries. It's a, they're very common. So a lot of this information may really be practical to you. So if, if you're on a different cruise line, stay tuned. And I think you'll be able to kind of look at this and go, yeah, that type of itinerary is for me, or maybe it's not for you. You know, it's up for you to decide. Yeah. But thinking about Disney, it's really true that the overall experience really for all ages provided by Disney is unmatched. In part one, I mentioned this, but it really deserves reiteration. Disney is a premium cruise line experience and it is on the expensive side, but there's something special about the way Disney anticipates the needs you didn't even know you had. It's where the magic really is, in my opinion. I have a friend who was telling me they went they went on a Disney cruise and he has a daughter and the she was wearing her princess dress. It's a Disney cruise. Of course, she's dressing up like a princess and the captain of the ship saw her, went up to her, kind of knelt down and just interacted with her like a princess. And I mean, her eyes were huge. And as a dad, he was just beaming and just was in awe of the magic that Disney brought to both her and to him, seeing the way that the captain interacted with his little girl. That's pretty special. And no other line does that. I mean, let's just be honest. No other line does that. So what's the criteria? We're looking at any Disney cruise between essentially the week of December 20th and January 5th. That's where the bulk of your holiday school vacations are. And I'm making the assumption here that we're taking a trip for our families. It's a family vacation. And because of that, it is possible that maybe you're going to leave a little early. So some of these itineraries might 
start that weekend before December 20th. But that's kind of the range we're looking at. These itineraries really settle into their, you know, holiday, very merry Christmas type of cruise experience um, after November. So these you can do these itineraries earlier, but I'm also making the assumption that you really don't want to pull your kids out of school if you don't have to. Just be aware that the longer you wait in the year to go on these cruises, the more expensive they get. And any cruise on Disney Cruise Line that starts after Christmas, that means December 26th or later, no longer feature the very merry time theme. They may have some things left over, but like the decorations start coming down. Okay, so let's quickly look at the places where we could go. Okay, as I mentioned, the cruise starts here in Galveston where there's access, you know, within four hours to like around five million people. And that's just a rough guesstimate because I just started typing in populations of big cities. That doesn't count the outlying areas. So Galveston, you know, it's a, it's a pretty industrial port, but there's, you're right next to Houston. There's a lot of stuff to do here, as many of you are aware. One stop we could go to is Cozumel. Cozumel has a lot on offer. There's a lot of things to do in Cozumel and a lot of people love it. It's also on the Western side of the Caribbean, so it's not far from Galveston. Progreso is another stop on the Yucatan Peninsula. I've been here before as well, and there's some great historical things that you can experience as well as beaches and a lot of things happening. The last place that we would potentially stop is Georgetown in the Grand Cayman. Uh, we've had a couple of great experiences here in Grand Cayman, particularly swimming with stingrays, exploring the island, checking out the turtles. There's just so much to do here. So we have some really nice Caribbean cruise options and sort of bring Disney a little closer. So what are the itineraries? Well, first off, there are no three night itineraries within the window that I was looking at the late December, early January window. There are, however, a number of four-night itineraries. There's the four-night Western Caribbean from Galveston. It leaves either December 15th or December 19th or December 29th. So that does, it repeats the itinerary twice and then it takes a break and does something else and then does this itinerary again after Christmas. This one goes to, Gal it starts in Galveston, you have a sea day, then you go to Progreso, in Mexico, and then you kind of have a sea day coming back. For Clint's cruisability score, this one gets a variety score of one. We're going to one place, and it has a one to two ratio, so we, we lose a point here because of the number of sea days to get down to Mexico and back without an additional stop. For repeatability, it gets a 3.5 out of 10, Adventure a five out of 10, Enrichment a seven out of 10, and this, that really is uh, carrying on the back of Progresso as being really a fascinating stop to explore the Mexican culture and history, which is great. This is on the Disney Magic, and Cruise Critic gives this ship a score of 4.5. For a novelty bonus, however, it doesn't have any additional novelty bonus for this. So we have a total score of 28.5. The next itinerary option is a six-night Western Caribbean cruise from Galveston. This one leaves on December 23rd returns on the 29th. This goes from Galveston. You spend two days at sea, then you go to Georgetown and Grand Cayman, and then you go to Cozumel, and then you have a sea day to get back to Galveston. For variety, we have a score of two on Clint's cruisability scores. This is three countries, but we lose a uh, point because of one too many sea days, but it's just because you, to go from Galveston to anywhere, you have to spend an extra day at sea. For repeatability, we get a five. Adventure six, Enrichment 4.5, Relaxation 5.5, and again, the ship score on the Disney Magic is 4.5. It's really not too bad um, at 27.5 for our total score. All right, so which is the cruise for you? Well, I'm picking that six night Western Caribbean from Galveston, December 23rd to 29th. I really like stopping at, at Grand Cayman. I like Cozumel. I wish that I was getting the history from Progresso, but we'd need a seven night to get that in so we could go from Cozumel over to Progresso and then back up to Galveston. And they're just not on offer here. So that's my pick. It's the same score. It does lose a point. That's really because of the enrichment score. It's not quite as good because we're, we don't have Progresso. But I think what you get from, K, from Grand Cayman and from, from Cozumel more or less make up for it. What do you think? Am I right? Let me know in the comments below. 
So, you know, really, thanks so much for watching. Make sure to check out part one for Fort Lauderdale and part three for Australia and part four for Port Canaveral and part five to recap the whole thing. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I have more coming. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time. Thank you.